Mansion Perfume I'm a musician, and since the start of the pandemic, I've been holding up in my basement studio to record on most days. I make my coffee in the morning and head downstairs, plug in my guitar and see what happens. Sometimes I work on a song, but more often than not, I improvise and listen back to what I played later to see if there is any usable material. A few months ago, I had a vivid dream about playing guitar. This isn't unusual for me. I spend so much time in the waking world doing this that it often creeps into my dream life. The thing that was markedly different, however, was that I was using a guitar pedal I don't actually have. Typically, if I dream about playing music, it's focused around the actual experience of playing rather than setting up my gear. However, I woke up with the clearest memory of this dream pedal. The guitar pedal was pitch black with silver letters that read, Ancient Perfume across the top. It had one switch and one dial. The switch moved between two settings, day and night. The dial started out set to zero, but you had the option to move it to the left to BC, or to the right to AD. There were some notches that corresponded to the way BC and AD years span out from point zero. In the dream, I was messing with the pedal. I had it on the day setting and maybe about halfway up the AD side of the dial. It created a beautiful sound, a wash with reverb. I only struck a few notes but they rang out so gloriously that I woke up with goosebumps all over my arms and legs. My friend Ryan builds a custom guitar pedal so I told him about the dream during a zoom call. He laughed and said that it would be no big deal to create something like that. It seemed like a fun concept to have a pedal I had dreamed in my studio. I offered him some musical equipment as a trade, and he said he would get to work. A month or so later, Brian left the finished guitar pedal in a box on my front steps. I collected it and took it down to the basement immediately. It was black with silver lettering, but obviously it looked a little different than the one in my dream. Brian had done a great job with it. I was floored that he had been able to pull this off. He told me that he had programmed the pedals that the day setting had a brighter, clearer tone, while the night setting had a muddier, reverb-soaked sound. The further you went back to BC, the more distant things would be, almost like you were listening to music played throughout the floorboards of a room filled with water. If you moved the dial to AD, the sound would become louder, more soaring, and the notes would ring out like I told him they had in my dream. I fiddled with it for a couple of hours, trying out all the different settings. I recorded my session, as I always do. I don't end up using most of the material, but I've gotten into the habit of archiving everything just in case. It's easier to do that than stop what I'm doing in the middle of a groove to set up all my recording equipment. A couple of days later, I got around to listening back to the recording. I was cleaning up the basement studio, absentmindedly letting the file play on my headphones as I dusted and organized. All was pretty normal when I was using the day setting. Both the BC and AD had their own unique sounds that developed more the further I rotated the dial. I made a mental note of which combinations would work for different projects later on. The things started to get weird when I heard myself switch over to the night setting. I had begun the night improvisation session on the 0 AD mark in the middle, just to establish the different sounds. I nearly dropped the dusting rag I was clutching when I listened in. There was the sound of a crowd in the background. It was clear as day. Some cheering, some screaming, and even what sounded like booing, or heckling that would rise up every so often and then dissolve back into screams. I paused it, wondering if I had somehow recorded over another track. Maybe one of my old live recordings had ended up in the garage band file. I double checked but there was no reason why this would be happening, especially because the first 20 minutes of my recording session was completely clear. I built my studio to be soundproof, 
so there was no way that it was coming from outside or any other part of the house. The noise was pretty unbearable. I listened on and the crowd noise eventually went away, but not until I turned the dial back to the next notch in the BC direction. At first, everything sounded great. It was a different sound than the day, with a little more edge to it. I could see it being a perfect setting for when I played with my band, once we were able to do that again. Only a minute or so in, I began to hear voices again. This time, it was less of a crowd, and more like a group of people chanting. I stopped cleaning and sat down on my computer. I messed with the audio settings to try to scoop out whatever frequency was causing this anomaly, but it wouldn't go. The sound of my playing was impacted by my edits, but the chanting stayed the same regardless. I could almost hear what they were saying, and it didn't sound like it was in English. I wondered then if maybe my amplifier was picking up some radio signal. It was an old tube amp and will occasionally have some audio issues like this. I set up my guitar with the ancient perfume pedal to plug directly into the board. I was a little bummed that I would likely have to part with my amp while Ryan worked in it, but figured this would solve whatever issue was causing these voices to show up in the background. I recorded it using the night setting on all the various notches of the BC80 dial, so I could accurately test their sound. I didn't get a chance to listen back to the new recording until the next day. I was baffled by what I was hearing. The crowd noise was still there at first, and when I clicked the dial back one notch in the BC direction, it changed over to chanting. It wasn't immediate. For a minute, when I would start playing on any setting, everything sounded great, and then the noise would start up. I listened on. As the BC dial was turned further back, the chanting turned into talking. I did my best to isolate the sound and could clearly hear people having a conversation. It was not in any language I had recognized, and I toured all over the world. This went on until the next click in the BC direction. The voices went away and were replaced with singing. It was a female sounding voice, and it seemed to perfectly harmonize with what I was playing. Was it some kind of weird overtone? I knew I needed to call Ryan and fill him in. On the next click to the left, the singing ended and for a minute I wondered if I had found the sweet spot. My guitar sounded great and I was happy with the audio quality, but then I started to hear animal noises. It was like a rainforest field recording or something. There were birds shrieking and what sounded like monkeys screaming. Something roared in the distance. All while I noodled around on the guitar, it seemed to tell the story. I could hear the animals and then they sounded like they were becoming afraid. The shrieks became like warnings. The roars were bellows. A sound so loud came that I cried out and ripped the headphones off. They were vibrating on my desk, buzzing from the weight of the impact. My ears still ringing, I brought the volume of the project way down and tentatively put the headphones back on once I was sure the noise was gone. What was strange is that I was monitoring the audio wave on the computer and there was no indication of any spike in sound, let alone something so noisy. There were two more clicks to the left in the BC direction of my recording, and the first one brought relative silence with something that sounded like wind or a storm going on outside. It was actually kind of a cool effect, and I wondered if I could do some kind of meditation type track with it. The notch furthest to the left brought relative silence behind my recording, but the silence eventually gave way to a strange frequency. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It was unchanging, a single note. I found my little studio keyboard and quickly discovered it was an E. The piece that I had been playing didn't even have an E in the scale. The AD recordings were less nuanced from notch to notch. They all had the sound of chatter in them. The further I turned the dial to the right, the louder the chatter got. 
Eventually, one turn from the end, it was deafening. It sounded like a thousand people talking at once. I could barely hear my recording. This was ridiculous. I heard myself switch the dial to the last setting, the furthest rotation to the right in the AD direction, but the recording was just blank. I couldn't hear my guitar, and there was no other noise either, just total silence that lasted until the end of the audio file. I'm going to get in touch with Ryan to let him know what's going on with the pedal. I can't seem to figure it out. It's kind of a cool quirk, but I'm interested to know what the mechanics are. Update. I sent Ryan the recordings and he just called me back. He has no idea why the pedal is producing those sounds. He said the inner mechanism is very simple, it's just a reverb unit. There is nothing that should be causing voices to emit or tones of any kind. He asked me about a hundred questions about my audio setup, which he's seen many times before, and then he settled on his own diagnosis. I'm messing with him. He laughed a little about it and said it was a good joke, that I must have talked to his wife Cindy. Miss Cindy's a history teacher. And we've all known each other for years, but I assured him that no, I haven't spoken with Cindy in weeks. He got kind of quiet and I pressed him to know what he meant. He told me that when he was building the pedal, Cindy was there, talking to him about different epochs of the earth. She was amused by the pedal's BC and AD functions, and went on to point to the different notches to deliver a history lesson to Ryan. I wanted more information and he said he'd have Cindy call me when she got home. Update 2 Just got off the phone with Cindy. She hasn't heard the recording yet so didn't quite understand Ryan's request, but happily obliged when she realized she would get to talk about history. She told me that she had briefly chatted with Ryan about the different periods of both ancient and pre-human history while he was making the pedal going on about the pre-Cambrian era, development of life on Earth, the time when animals like the dinosaurs ruled supreme before the great meteor came, evolution of human life, and gradual development of language, song, and community. She said that 0 AD was the start of modern history and was marked by the life and public death of Christ. Since 0 AD, Human civilization has gone through numerous eras, but modern life has been more about exponential growth rather than any sort of geological epoch. I said that it was funny. How when she talked about that, I almost wondered if I was hearing dinosaurs screaming and not birds and monkeys. She laughed and said that I had a big imagination. Update 3 I played with all the many sounds in the ancient perfume pedal again. I've spent more time in each of the epochs. I played in 0 AD night for an hour, and when I listened back, the crowd noise eventually reached a crescendo. People were screaming and jeering and then it turned into crying. The crying gave way to silence. Near the end of my recording, I heard what sounded like a small group of overjoyed people chanting and cheering tearfully. It reminded me of the movies I've seen about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Update 4 I played all day today, a couple of hours in each of the epochs. If you spend enough time on the first notch of BC, the people chanting eventually changes over into someone giving a speech. I was able to isolate the voice and transcribe some of it. The language is not anything that Google Translate can recognize. One tick over, there was the quiet conversation. It seemed to pan from left to right, like the people were moving around. Some people made sounds that were rudimentary, more like grunts or sighs than any kind of diction. Their verbalizations panned around my headphones. Sometimes there was nothing, and then a new group of people would show up and then pan through as if they were all passing by me, never stopping, never staying in one place. Another rotation to the left on BC, and we were back to the beautiful female voice. It was more sophisticated than the previous sounds, 
She harmonized with everything I played. Her voice drifted over my guitar and filled in the empty spaces, soft and warm as velvet. Who was she? Why was she here? Between the migrating voices and the shrieks of an ancient jungle. I clicked to the left and we were back with the animals. They were not like dinosaurs that I had heard on TV or film. But I had spent some time looking up monkey and big cat sounds and there was no way that was what I was listening to. I heard a whole lush jungle. Warm breezes and trees swaying and animals with big, heavy feet passing through. They called out to each other. They ate from big, crunchy leaves. I heard their tones change over to those filled with fear as they screamed and cried. And from this warning, I knew to remove my headphones just in time for the big crash. On the second to last notch, there is the sound of wind, water, and earth without a man or beast. It was gentle, soothing, and I thought again how it would make an excellent backing track for a New Age album. Slipping into a gentle meditation, I listened to the piece of a landscape free from mobile life. But what about this frequency? on the last notch of BC. It plays an E no matter what I do on my guitar. It's a sound that rings out, a sound that seems to shift everything I do back to it. I can't break away from it. I play it under the key and it rains it in, pulling it to E. Is this the sound of the earth as it is pulled into orbit, as it starts its day under the watchful guidance of the sun? I can't think of anything else but playing music. Update 5 I slept finally, after a few days of nothing but playing. I visited all the eras. AD is more interesting than I thought. Each notch to the right brings something more recognizable. If you stay in a notch long enough, the voices become clearer. I've heard the birth of modern language. Eventually, English words emerge from the mystery. I hear old songs, folk songs that dance around my guitar. Plays are recited in Italian and English. I hear occasional wars, if I stay in a notch long enough. Voices pass through the airwaves and I hear everything they say now. Sometimes the conversations are seemingly insignificant. Couples sharing love or talking about their day. It seems it's all here. Nothing has happened on the earth which doesn't have an echo. Update 6 I reached, and now, I'm one notch from the last on the AD side, and I played for 10 hours. I heard pieces of my own life eventually, and then I heard my own guitar layered on top of the recording. It was Horace with No Name by America, the first song I ever learned to play as a kid. I could hear my dad who was a huge fan of theirs, teaching me in the background. I had to buy a new hard drive to hold all my recordings. Eventually, I heard my phone conversations with Ryan and Cindy, and I heard the keys of my computer and the record I was listening to as I typed up my story for all of you. Update 7 I played on the last notch of AD for about 5 hours, and it is nothing but silence. I've tried everything I can to finesse the file. I played with my app even gone direct in, but there's nothing. So I went back to the notch before I did all my playing there. I hear up to now, and then I hear the news. I hear all the latest stuff that I've been reading in the papers. The voices are deafening, but sometimes the audio will focus in here or there. There are so, so many people. I have to concentrate so hard on their voices that I get a pounding headache. The cacophony lives, and then a voice filters in. A few people talking about my story. They read about it online. The noise swells again, deafening. Billions of voices layered. It's as loud as the explosion of the dinosaur notch. I take my headphones off and wait. I don't have to wait too long. Everything goes silent. After that, and I can't produce any more sound in the setting. It's completely, blissfully silent. Update 8 
In the place of silence on the AD dial for nine hours and a single tone rings out. It's in the key of E. I play so long, my fingers bleed, and my eyes glaze over from lack of sleep. The E reigns in my sound and draws it all back to itself. I let it play all day and eventually, from out of that, comes the sound of wind, the sound of waves, the sound of a world starting over.